In 1990, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the real Ghostbusters shared one animated special in the now classic Cartoon All-Stars to the rescue. Unfortunately, only Slimer and Michelangelo were part of that special, and their interactions were minimal. It wouldn't be until the 30th anniversary of both properties that they would finally team up. And unlike most crossovers between different franchises, this one would make an impact in both universes. Today, I'll be talking about the first team-up between the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Ghostbusters from the IDW comics. The four-issue miniseries was a collaboration of two art teams. From the Ghostbusters side, Eric Burnham, Dan Schoening, Luis Antonio Delgado, and Neil Uyataki. From the TMNT side, Tom Waltz, Charles Paul Wilson III, Corey Smith, and Rhonda Pattison. Both series were published by IDW, with their ongoing series also starting in 2011. Although Ghostbusters' publication history was a little more complicated than that. It's worth mentioning that the script for the series was initially worked between Burnham and Waltz, and later worked on by Bobby Kernow. It took two years from the idea's inception in 2012 for the crossover to materialize. Visually, Dan Schoening came up with very specific designs for the Turtles, and the miniseries was filled with Easter eggs and references for both franchises. I recommend reading the issues with the Ghostbusters wiki at hand if you want the full experience. By the time this story was printed, Ghostbusters had recently finished their second ongoing volume. If you're not familiar with the book, it follows the same continuity from the first two movies and Ghostbusters video game of 2009. Notably, this universe is chronologically out of phase with the Ninja Turtles one. The events of the book happen in the mid-1990s, and this story occurs after or during 1996, judging by some hints given during Volume 2. As for the Turtles chronology, this story occurs right before or early during the Attack on Technodrome saga that I already covered on this channel. As a refresher, in that story, the Turtles were conflicted by Splinter's desire to end the Shredder, as it was clear to them that the impending activation of the Technodrome would mean the end of the human race. Donatello broke ranks with his family to work on an interspatial teleportation unit with Harold Lilja, based on the schematics provided by the Fugitoid. This device would allow them to make a surprise attack on Burnow Island, where the Technodrome was being built. During this period, the Turtles would also have their first encounter with the Rat King, an immortal who belonged to the mysterious Pantheon, a secret group of siblings that also included Kitsuna, a character with deep links with the Ninja Turtles, as she was responsible for creating the Shredder. As I mentioned before, 2014 was the 30th anniversary of both franchises. So once the Ghostbusters finished their anniversary event, their volume ended, and this miniseries took place. The story starts with the introduction of another member of the Pantheon, Chi Yu. This immortal, like many of his siblings, inspired legends throughout time. In his case, he was worshipped as a god of war in China. But during the Muromachi period in Japan, Chi Yu surprised Kitsune while she was making deals with Krang. This was outrageous. The immortals long ago agreed not to get involved with humanity directly and only use them as pawns. But this was different. It looked like Kitsune was making deals with demons. Cornered by Chi Yu while making deals with Krang, Kitsune defensively sent Chi Yu through Krang's portal. However, this gate had safeguards to prevent unwanted incursions. So Chi Yu probably ended in limbo or completely destroyed. In the present, the Turtles, Casey, and April were getting ready to test the interspatial teleportation unit. Their target was the Turtle Lair under the abandoned church. But just before they crossed the portal, Harold accidentally pressed the wrong switch, and the group crossed into a different dimension. This dimensional breach didn't go undetected by the Ghostbusters, who already had devices monitoring any possible dimensional incursions made by demons, entities like the Collectors, or gods like Gozar. And just in case you need a reminder on who's who, the Ghostbusters are Aegon Spangler whose scientific curiosity and thirst for knowledge has been known to outweigh his own common sense. Ray Stance, the heart of the Ghostbusters and a fount of arcane knowledge and childlike enthusiasm. Peter Venkman, a quick-witted man who still somehow manages to speak faster than he thinks. And Winston Zeddemore, a former Marine and most practical team member. They're often assisted by their secretary, Janine Melnitz, and by Ray's employee and reserve Ghostbuster, Kylie Griffin. 
It turned out that the turtles ended at the right place, just in a different dimension, where the church wasn't abandoned. In fact, they interrupted a wedding. But something else happened when the turtles crossed dimensions. They freed Chi Yu from Limbo. Chi Yu quickly realized none of his siblings were in this world, meaning he was no longer tied to their rules. After possessing Casey Jones and some other innocent bystanders, he learned the English language. The Ghostbusters came to the rescue, but couldn't prevent Chi Yu from escaping with his possessed humans. They also immediately realized that the turtles weren't ghosts or demons. They were emitting a low-level phase variance at a cellular level, which finally explained the dimensional breach alert from earlier. The Turtles and April agreed to get together with the Ghostbusters again at the firehouse, as they didn't fit in the Ecto-1. Meanwhile, Chi Yu realized he could reshape the world to make it as he wanted. After succeeding, he would make the Turtles build another machine to allow him to find and conquer other worlds. He released all the possessed humans except Casey, who was not only a key hostage, but also a template for him to create an army of warriors. Inspired by him, he kidnapped two hockey teams and remade them in his image. At the firehouse and after studying the turtles, Aegon determined that their energy readings were degrading. According to his calculations, they only had 72 hours to return to their dimension or risk getting lost forever. In the meantime, in their efforts to rescue Casey, they confronted Chi Yu and his minions again. However, because of the gods linked to his minions, they could not trap him. It became clear then that they needed to take care of the minions first, thanks to some hints from a possessed Casey. Learning from their mistakes, they decided to do further experiments with a device that would allow them to unlink the minions from the god. They finally freed a minion and a super powerful version of Casey. In a race against time, Aegon and Donnie dedicated all their time to building the new portal. At the same time, another group focused on a massive EMP kind of weapon that would allow them to unlink all the minions in the area. And they finished it right on time. The minions and Chi Yu quickly invaded the firehouse. After using the bomb, Chi Yu found himself almost powerless, and in a desperate attempt, he possessed Winston. The rest of the group eventually freed Winston and trapped Chi Yu. But while this was happening, something more dangerous was going on in the basement. There was a miscalculation on how much energy their power grid could handle. Donnie and Aegon had to make emergency repairs to prevent the containment unit from exploding. But they obviously managed to fix everything, and without much time to spare, the Turtles, Casey, and April returned to their dimension, back to the Turtle Lair where they were initially going. But at the firehouse, the Ghostbusters decided not to mix Chi Yu with the other imprisoned ghosts. Instead, they sent the trap containing him through the portal to a location near Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away from the Turtles' Earth. Now floating in space, it was a matter of time until Chi Yu found a way back to his siblings again. As I mentioned earlier, this story mattered. The events of this crossover had lasting repercussions, which is unusual for many franchise crossover events. On the Ghostbusters side, the story continued in the Get Real miniseries, where they met the real Ghostbusters version of themselves from a different dimension. The real Ghostbusters arrived in their world after a protective spell saved them from being captured by the god Proteus. In this story, references were made to their encounter with the Ninja Turtles, and the Inner Spatial Teleportation Unit, although not essential, was a part of that story. Ironically, and as a joke, a TMNT popsicle appeared in the 2015 annual. On the Ninja Turtle side, I already explored the attack on Technodrome Saga, where the turtles would triumph, but only after paying a horrible price for it. But time passed and Chi Yu would remain trapped in Alpha Centauri, until the conclusion of the Armageddon game, when Kitsune would use the Turnstone to free him from the trap and bring him back to finish off the Rat King. Due to this event, all the remaining members of the Pantheon were killed, although these immortals can't really stay dead for long. But before these events, a second crossover miniseries occurred between the Trial of Krang and the Triceraton Invasion. I'll cover this story in a future video. There were plans for a third crossover back in 2018, and the idea was for the Ghostbusters to finally visit the Ninja Turtles dimension, which would have involved a new submarine Ecto vehicle. But many changes happened in the Ghostbusters franchise in recent years that prevented Eric Burnham from writing new stories. Keep in mind that both franchises rely on approval from the rights holders. Whether a third crossover will happen or not, only time will tell. 
Finally, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, you should pick up the two volumes published before this miniseries. They're really worth reading. Thanks for watching. See you in the sewers.